What is up you guys? Welcome back. If you are new here, which you probably are because everybody is new here, I am so happy to have you join me today taking a break from my Get the Most Out of Your Palette series, which was incredibly fun to, I don't know, do something that I want to do just for me. I know St. Patrick's Day is coming up. It's a, as good an excuse as any to uh, just slap more green on my face as if you didn't already know. Green is my favorite color. So I wanted to do something green today. Plus I have some new things that I promised I would share with you if I were to ever try out some new products. So I have a new concealer to try, a new loose setting powder, which is why I'm sort of in media's res right now with my foundation routine. I have been playing around with it already, but just to solidify my thoughts about these products, I will uh, I will test them out for you on, on my channel. Also, I got a bunch of new cool stuff from ColourPop, so I'm going to try incorporate as much of that as I can tonight. So yeah, this is just a sort of get ready with me with some new products with a green theme, I guess. I don't really know. Now that I have my foundation on, I'm going to try out this new concealer that I finally got in the mail today, which is the ColourPop No Filter Concealer in the shade Fair 5, which I believe is the fairest shade. <laughs> I have also heard from lots of people that it oxidizes, so I was sure to buy the fairest shade possible so that in case it did oxidize, it wouldn't oxidize deeper than my actual skin tone. So this is why I did that. I'm going to finish it off with this new powder that I just got and I've been trying out a couple times and so far so good, but I, you know, just wanted to show you on camera that I am testing out the new Maybelline Fit Me loose finishing powder. I am in the shade 10 Fair Light. So these are the two things that I wanted to show you that I've been trying out that are new in my routine. Let's get started. Just going to take the concealer like I normally do. The doe foot applicator is a bit off. It's very flat. I didn't put on my other foundation, like my lighter foundation, because I thought maybe, you know, give this concealer a good try. See how well it can perform without my lighter foundation shade. I tried this concealer for the first time and I used it on my nose, which um I don't normally do. And now I remember why. Once I put on my nose highlight, it just like left this big red patch. It just took off all the foundation underneath. So I'm going to avoid that area today with my concealer and just do it under the eyes. I do believe this does oxidize, I've noticed, but I think it oxidizes to the right shade for my skin tone. If you were in the market for a new concealer that doesn't break the bank and you are looking to test this one out for yourself, I think it's worth it just because it's really cheap to try it out, but I'd say probably do a shade up because I do believe it oxidizes at least like half a shade down. And like for the price point, I think I like it so far. For me, concealers are gonna crease regardless on me because as you can see, my eye bags are pretty severe. I just have naturally really pouchy eyes that like, they're not ever gonna be creaseless and smooth. So concealers are always going to crease on me no matter what. And I think I like the setting powder as well. I'm just going to lightly set the rest of my areas. Always seems to skip up here and leave a patch, which I don't know why. If you want to know the products that I was using previously before they ran out was the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer and the Too Faced Born This Way Ethereal Setting Powder, which I loved both of those. Obviously, Shape Tape is like a miracle worker and the Ethereal Setting Powder is beautiful. It's got a really nice undertone to it that complements my skin really nicely. But those two products are expansive. So yeah, for the most part, I think this is working out quite well. I'm actually going to bake this area today too. Noticing a lot of my redness has been showing through lately. So far, I like the undertones of this a lot. I've also been trying out a new beauty blender. It's white instead of pink. I don't know if that actually makes a difference or if they're different in any way. I have been trying that out since I gave my I gave my pink one to Andrew, who is um, playing the MC in a production of Cabaret. We were picking up some products for him to use for his look for the MC. I thought a beauty sponge would be best for him, so I ended up picking up a beauty blender for him. The store we went to didn't have the pink one, which is the one I just always use because it works. They didn't have it, so instead I got the white one, but then I realized since, you know, for the show, his foundation is like clown white. He's using Kryolan, like a Kryolan TV paint stick, that that probably won't work with a white beauty blender. You won't be able to see like what products on your sponge. So I ended up sanitizing my pink one and giving it to him and then taking the white one for myself. It does 
actually feel quite different. I think it's just supposed to serve like a different, a bit of a different purpose than the original Beauty Blender, but it's so squishy. I don't know if I like it yet, and I don't know if it's sucking up more or less product. I can't actually discern that yet. I remember the first time I bought a beauty sponge, it was at Winners, and it was obviously like a beauty blender dupe, but I didn't realize that like beauty blenders were a brand. I thought they were just like a thing. So when I saw this like egg shaped sponge, I was like, oh, and I grabbed it and it was only $6. So I was like, great. And I went to try it out and it was like as hard as a rock. <laughs> and I had no idea, like, oh God. I had no idea that it was just a knockoff. When I finally picked up a real beauty blender for the first time and like, I was like, what is this magic? Like I thought it was witchcraft. I need to do some eyelid priming. I did put down some concealer. Yeah, I'm just gonna go into my Peachy Mattes palette and pick up Peach Meringue, which is a sort of like really pale yellow shade, but I'm not gonna set with loose powder. I've just been trying a whole bunch of, a whole slew of new techniques, seeing if, you know, what works. I'm not married to any one technique just yet. Let me know in the comments if you guys use eyeshadow primers or if you just use concealer and loose setting powder or if you don't prime your eyelids at all and you just go straight in for the eyeshadow. Like, I want to know. And like, tell me what works for you. These veins are popping tonight. Like, sometimes I can't tell if one of my eyeshadow looks is just like patchy as fuck or if it's just my veins coming, coming, coming to play. I'm also gonna play with some new single shadows that I got. I finally made a Makeup Geek order, which was very fun and exciting. I have never used any of their shadows before. Obviously, I hear so much about them, so I picked up a couple that, you know, a couple of shades that were missing from my collection or things that I thought in my collection that didn't perform well enough that I, you know, wanted to try something new. The yellow, the yellow one is a ColourPop one, FYI. So for my transition today, I'm just going to take this very seafoam green turquoise shade, and that's called Shore Thing. <laughs> I thought this would be a really cool transition into more jewel tones today. This is super light, but I kind of am loving it for this really sea foamy transition shade. Just a pastel dream over here. Next, gonna go dip into my Jaclyn Hill palette and take this guy, which I believe is called Jada, one of my favorites. Just gonna use that to deepen the crease. It pairs perfectly with the shore thing. What I wanna know is why beauty influencers don't love green. Why? I've even heard one say so much as that they hate green eyeshadow. And I took that a little personally. So we're gonna make up for it here on my channel, folks. You're gonna see a lot of green. I got some really fun Super Shock shadows, which I've never tried before, besides my highlighters, which I love. I've been so excited to try out the formula of these Super Shocks. So I got these three here. They're so pretty. We're gonna use we're gonna use this one today. It's called Cusp. It's just a completely like green of greens, and it's more of a sparkly shade or glitter shade than a metallic. And then we've got Special Delivery, which is a deeper sort of more oceany green, which I'm really excited to try out. That looks like a metallic. And then this guy, which I'm so excited to try. This one is called Telepathy, and it's just a like a true like sort of chartreuse gold. Look at that. That's telepathy right there. That is something else. That's when you know you like makeup too much is when like you get like a little aroused at eyeshadow. I think I have a problem. We're gonna jump into Cusp today, which is the green glitter shade. But let's just pick up a little bit of Cusp on the finger. It's got a bunch of duochrome like reflective glitter in it. Fucking beautiful. If you have never tried a Super Shock Shadow, I mean, if you can, I would, I would, I would recommend them wholeheartedly. Like, this just elevated my mood. Like, I was kind of feeling blah. It's just changed my mood like 5,000%. I mean, if that isn't St. Patrick's Day, what is? It's so pigmented and all you need is your finger and like, that was the easiest eye look I've ever done. I'm gonna do some liner and some mascara and lashes, and I will catch up with you in a bit. I don't wanna talk about it. I know, I should know when to quit. <sighs> well, I thought this look was gonna turn out great. Turns out, I don't know when to just call it a day. I was all ready to just do a simple black wing. It was gonna be easy, it's gonna be fun, but no, instead, instead, 
when I saw my makeup kit, my NYX Vivid Brights. Oh, wouldn't that be such a cute look? Do a little bit of a pistachio liner with this green eyeshadow look. Wouldn't that just tie everything together so well? But Maddie, didn't you hear that these liners are really, really cakey and like flake off within like five minutes and like don't really look good at all? Yeah, I heard that. I did. I did. I did hear that from several people. But you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna disregard all that and use it anyway. Because it's pretty. Uh, folks, take it from me. Don't use the NYX Vivid Brights eyeliner. Just don't. This has been a PSA. So I tried to salvage it with a little bit of green eyeshadow, black liner. Tried to make it a little bit of a graphic moment. That's, that's, what's, what, the, this is it. This is all you get. I salvaged it as best I could. Please don't look too closely at my lashes either. This is the second pair of lashes I've had on tonight. <laughs> it's been a journey. Anyway, moving on to something that we have control over and that's bronzer and contour. Let's remember that time when we put on the green eyeshadow and we were really happy. Let's just let's just think back on that moment how nice it was while it lasted. I picked these up because they were on sale and because look the colors are gorgeous. Like, look 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 at these would be so pretty on the face. Turns out the suck. So yeah if anyone has any good recommendations for like colored liner that actually works would love to know moving on to a little kevin aquan contour still kind of like weirds me out just sort of conceptually let me elaborate on that you're just you're you're forcing shadows onto your face and the eye just sort of accepts it it's just to me that is still kind of mind-boggling blush i'm gonna keep it Pretty neutral today. You can always count on blush to lift your spirits. Lately, I've been really loving layering a Super Shock highlighter underneath a powder highlighter. So I'm gonna take my Stole the Show, which is my whitest, brightest highlighter, and pop that on. <laughs> this on the inner corner and the brow bone also. Also? Also. So moving on to lower lash line. Just to tie this all in, I'm going to take Jada again from the Jaclyn Hill palette and just give that a sweep under the eye. And then I'm just going to take this really dark green shade into the palette, which is called Enchanted. Smoke out the lower lash line. I'm going to take this Makeup Geek eyeshadow called Limelight, which I used to attempt to salvage this liner, which it did its best. And I'm just going to take that and pop that over top. And I believe we might just have a look on our hands, folks. To top everything off, I'm going to go in with my Moon Child Glow Kit and take Lucky Clover because... And just dust that over top of my highlight. Who says green highlighter isn't practical? I am almost happy enough with the look that I can excuse the green eyeliner monstrosity, <laughs> but I won't. We are just about there, folks. It is late. I need to go and get out of here. I need to stop looking at my lashes and wishing they were even. The last thing we have to do tonight is lips, folks. And I am very excited because it is something I've been waiting for for a long time. It is finally in my hands a teal lipstick. This is the, the new ColourPop lipsticks. I have the shade Getty here in my hand and I'm so excited. I tried it last night and I really like it. So I think to just tie this green monstrosity together, this will be perfection. There you go guys, that is today's completed look. Even though we had a eyeliner battle for the ages, everything seemed to come together in the end if you look, you know, from here. Don't don't look too close. It was 
really really fun trying out some new products. I only ever buy new face products if I need refills so it always is kind of a long time between trying new face products so I was super pleased that the ColourPop No Filter Concealer worked for me. It didn't oxidize too badly with me and the Fit Me Loose Setting Powder was also great. As far as eyeshadows today they all came out amazingly and also the ColourPop lipstick was a surprise hit. I usually don't like cream lipsticks but this one for me is working out really really nicely. I love the formula. It's really comfortable and I like that it dries down a little bit so that I can eat and drink and not have to worry about so much transfer. So far everything that I've purchased has been worth it for me. I love living my green fantasy. It is my favorite favorite color for me when I am in a makeup rut and I'm feeling uninspired. I just pick up an eyeshadow of my most favorite color and go to town and that usually perks me right back up. Maybe you try that for yourself. I love green so much and it was so fun to play around with my favorite color. If you enjoyed watching this video today, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. It's really fun over in this little corner that we have secured for ourselves in the YouTube land. So please be sure to come and join in on the fun. I promise it's fun. Also, if you liked this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I know that helps me out a lot. And since I don't have an uploading schedule, if you wish to be notified every time I upload, hit that little bell icon and that'll give you a notification every time I upload a video. If you are out partying or celebrating tonight, just make sure you are safe and you are with people that you love and people who you trust. Make sure you get home safely tonight, folks. Please be kind and be generous to everyone you meet out in the world today and I will hopefully see you on the next one.